The following is a segment from a Mutari-sponsored webinar on the FCC's Hospital Robocall Protection Group findings, detailing the specific threats and actions needed to combat fraudulent robocall activity within healthcare organizations. Visit our YouTube channel for the full presentation. John, the next aspect of it was, you know, let's, let's dive down into the heart of what we really want to talk about, which is the hospitals. And with that same theme that we had within the report of prevention, response, and mitigation, um, can you go into some of the details that we discussed with regards to prevention? And these are really are the responsibilities and actions that uh, hospitals can take to protect themselves. Yeah, absolutely, Rebecca. And I, before that, before I begin there, I just want to seize on a couple of points you made. The bad guys will, in fact, implement countermeasures to any of our security measures that we take. So this is not a uh, problem that can be solved by any one commission, any one group of recommendations, just as in cyber threats, criminal threats, violent crime, the bad guys are always thinking of how to evade our measures that we've put in place. So this is a process, it's ongoing, and at least as we uh, have implemented this process, if nothing else, it'll create what probably the first thing uh, that's most important for hospitals to help protect themselves is creating education and awareness uh, of this issue. And a lot of these attacks, these call, these malicious calls, these fraudulent calls can be prevented if the staff is aware of the potential fraudulent nature of these calls. So the first issue is just train staff to identify and recognize the different types of robocalls and um, how somebody may be able to socially engineer them into giving information. These calls are only successful if we give them the information. So ultimately at its heart, these type of calls, schemes, are psychological attacks. The intent is to deceive the recipient of the call in, into giving them valuable information. So in, in educating staff, training them to recognize the type of calls, and quite frankly, to be a little bit suspicious when anybody's asking you for sensitive information to be given over a phone or via email or in combination of a phone and email. That's how sophisticated they're getting. Even if it seems like they have some data points that uh, may make this seem legitimate, question that if it is sensitive information. Of course, no one should ever give their password and username to any system over the phone, nor should they give sensitive insurance information, health information over the phone. Carriers, insurance carriers, the hospital staff, and technical folks try to make that um, pretty clear. We're not gonna ask you for sensitive information over the phone. No government agency uh, will threaten you over the phone in terms of you must pay your bill, and here's your wiring instructions, we'll ask you to provide sensitive information over the phone. So identifying those calls, asking to send it via hard email, but they should, they should report it. 